later on, right? I'm almost destroying the episode before we've even started talking about the final bits, right? So not many, not many creators, by the way, when they do a wing coaster, will remember wing coasters load from two sides. It just gets completely lost and dwarfed by the fact that it's got the, the hyper coaster in the background. Uh, so this is the entrance area then, and I wanted this idea of the raised area. Uh, it's, I chose the point where it goes quiet, right? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for coming along to episode number 15 of Chatterlandia. And guys, it's home stretch. It's the final lap. Thank you all so much for all of your support. But this is Chatterlandia in all of its glory. This is what you guys have been supporting from the very beginning. And it's time for the final touches. We need to do the staff areas, the car park, the maintenance areas, the general tidy up. And we've just got a couple of rides that we need to put in as well. So... Bittersweet, it's time to finish the park and get ready to hand it over to you guys on the workshop and of course do the tour. So I'm not going to kick around with this, we're going to head straight into the first update and I'm going to start by doing the maintenance areas. Here we go. So let's go ahead and start with some maintenance areas then. So there's quite a lot to show you on this one, uh, but you'll also be quite familiar with some of the buildings that I'm using. I have recycled them from previous parks. A couple of reasons why, uh, a little bit of time constraint and a little bit of piece count constraint going on. Um, it's And I just like the buildings, right? So this, this warehouse I used in, in Raygate Lake, I just absolutely loved it when I did it. So I was like, I'm just going to use it again. And these warehouses didn't get enough love, right, <laughs> in the previous series. So we're going to give them some more love. Um, just to let you guys know, by the way, I am toying with the idea of not doing the insides of these, partly because it means that you guys get to do it when you get your hands on the park, and partly because this park is now in that tipping point between piece count and performance and yes I could detail every single inside of a maintenance warehouse but then it's going to drag the park performance down I'm in that sort of toying mind at the moment I need to put the admin offices in so that we can um, sort of see how this is going to go this isn't the only area I'm going to show you by the way uh, we're going to be going around the park there's quite a few changes that have, that have been made but let's just talk maintenance areas for a second right so, the maintenance areas are typically messy, disgusting industrial spaces. They are not looked after. They are not cared for. Uh, this is probably far tidier <laughs> than any maintenance area that I've ever been in. This has got far more order to it. But, ultimately, that's what they're there for. They are the blood of the park. They are the heart of the park. They're the bones of the park. They're everything that gets done inside. So, for example, this warehouse here would typically probably be used for the, uh, the rides itself. So, you know, we talk all the time about the maintenance areas and being able to collapse the rides, put them onto a back of a lorry and take them off site or take them somewhere. Well, this is where that those would go. Now, the reason they do that is so that they can... Um, inspect all of the parts that are on those rides so a roller coaster train will be stripped down to every single component the screws the bolts the everything and they get laid out in a line uh, and then they get inspected they get replaced uh, like for like so if a bolt needs replacing it will get replaced etc etc and then an insurance company here in the uk will then come in and inspect all of those parts uh, they will look at everything they'll sign everything off they'll say yes that's all fit for purpose so if something goes wrong you are insured um and then someone will come along and and repurpose Repurpose it, not repurpose it, rebuild it and then take it away again. So this is this is the type of warehouse that it would be. This is the type of size that you would find. Um this like I say, this is just a big empty space. There's not a lot to see here, right? It's like, oh great, well done. Uh, <laughs> but this is typically where you'll find all of that activity going on here. So it just has to be a big empty space so they can bring all of the coasters uh, and all of the trains in in one go. Now, you wouldn't necessarily do them in one go. If you're dealing with a park like this, you'd split it off into zones in the closed season. So you'd say, right, we're going to do this zone, collapse everything in this zone, take it to that warehouse, collapse everything in this zone, then take it to that warehouse and so on and so forth, right? So that's what you'd do. And then these warehouses here, these are typically more storage and office space style warehouses. So in the top floor here, you've got office spaces uh, that you you can have going on. And underneath, you've got storage spaces. So what you would typically find in here would be more things like retail storage. So you know where you want, you, you have to have somewhere to put all of your stock. You have to have somewhere to put everything uh, that you're going to be using in your park. Uh, this might also be greenhouses. You might also find plants and flowers and stuff in here. So these are typically multi-purpose warehouses where you'll find that they would have office stuff, so procurement stuff or marketing stuff or whatever. And this is where you'd also keep stock and signs and 
um, literature and all of that sort of stuff. You know, the leaflets, the park maps, all of that would all be stored somewhere like here. And then over in this side, you'd ha this is the engineer's style uh, maintenance area. So this is where they would bring parts of rides to be repaired or replaced. So whereas the other one, they're laying them out and they're replacing them, etc. This would be like the storage for all of those parts. This is where you typically find... Um, track pieces and and all of that sort of stuff you'd also have an area for park presentations as well and that would be sort of in here now park presentations these are the guys that are dealing with the signs and um all of the uh, the bins and the benches and uh, the flowers and how the whole place looks so that would typically be over here so this is like the first maintenance part now because i'm going to be putting um admin offices and stuff here uh, i didn't have uh, have enough room to put the rest of the stuff in so this is where we then start to move around the park and remember that you also need to think of park efficiency if you're trying to bring something from up over here down here it's actually quite inefficient to do that so what we're actually going to do is separate into two different zones uh, in here. So we've got this one down here. We're going to have one up here. But moving around the park, um, you've got the perimeter uh, the perimeter road now that's, that's all the way around the outside. And uh, we've got the recycle area here. So this is where all of the rubbish, all the trash would come. Um, and this is where it would all be processed and, and put into shipping containers. You'd have, then have your lorries coming in to pick them up and bring them out again. Now... Interesting fact, there are parks out there that are recycle only. So they insist on their, from their suppliers that anything that's consumable, anything that a guest could throw away, uh, must be recyclable. And then what they do is they put all of that into uh, a big recycling shipping container and it gets sent off to a, a processing plant. There's, there's no trash, there's no bin bags, there's nothing that goes to landfill and nothing that goes to waste. They are out there. Uh, we've got a couple of our parks that are doing that. And yeah, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting concept, but it makes it so much easier for trash delivery uh, or pick up. You don't deliver trash to the park, do you? <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> easy uh, <laughs> so yeah they, they just literally throw it all into a shipping container and off it goes to a processing plant uh, and, and that's done so that's what we're doing here and I thought I was going to put that here because I had this weird road shape and it felt like this would be a nice little uh, a nice little alcove we've seen this bit already this is the back end of the uh, of the log flume and everything so that that stays exactly the same and then we're going to come around this way uh, and now I've just joined all of this up and we've got some uh, warehouses and everything that are sitting at the back of uh, at the back of the the dark ride that we've got here the boat ride um haven't detailed this one out yet um i probably will it, it's just it's fine as it is at the moment but these are uh, again it's a slightly different warehouse um it's a more shed based warehouse but this is the same warehouse that i used at the front of the park in the first couple of episodes so we've seen these ones before uh, and then the perimeter road comes around this way and i've just put a road fence in because there is a terrain change here so you don't want lorries and stuff missing it and uh, falling falling down the down the hill and stuff uh, and then along the way i've just got some clutter because people would just dump things on the side of the road because they just need to move it out of the park and it's probably waiting to be picked up or whatever. So I'm just representing all of this kind of stuff all along the outside. Um, and then the perimeter road comes all the way around here. I've put all the foliage and the ex the exterior fence, the perimeter fence. And then I've also finished the fencing along here. So if you remember back to the POVs and everything of the hypercoaster, none of this was done. So this is now finished. This is now exactly as it should be. Then we're going to come back over here, and then there's the uh, the back end of the wing coaster uh, that we've got. And then we're going to come back this way through the road. Uh, and then we've just got another dumping ground here. So you can see that this is actually some of the support footers and everything that would have been used for the hyper coaster uh, just been left here. But because they've been left here for so long, it's actually starting to overgrow. Um, and so again, this would just be one of those areas that would be completely unloved and un uncared for, right? So, uh, and then we're going to come this way. And then we've got what used to be a warehouse, um, but the warehouse has been removed. It's been turned into a car park for the staff up this side of the uh, up this side of the park. Because if you think that you've got all your staff that are loading in down here they're coming in their cars down here they've got to get their way through the park and whatever so sometimes it's just easier to give them a car park at the top end of the, uh, the of the theme park so they can just enter into the back end and they can go that <laughs> that's what she said and uh <laughs> and then you just got a couple of warehouses that are in here as well and a couple of water treatment tanks 
you don't need high security or anything with with here because it is back of house so it's already a secure uh, area you don't need to take as much care with your with your fencing off and whatever as you would do if it was next to a right and stuff so uh, we, we're good to go we're good to go here and then we've just got a second warehouse zone here so this is again it's going to be a bit of a dumping ground for everything that's at the top end of the park and uh, this i think probably would have been moved back when they put the hyper coaster in here, um, so it would have been moved back, and this would probably be relatively fairly new because this is this is going to service all of the rides in this area, and it would also service this bit uh, as, as well. Now, weirdly, really, really weirdly, I like this view. I don't know why. I think it's just because it feels like such a back of a park where you've just got a concrete road that comes down. Guests wouldn't come up this way. You've got a uh, a roller coaster that's coming down this way. It's just a strange like feeling it just feels like it's a it's a proper end of uh, end of the park and then the road continues around this way to the back end of uh, the water treatment facility that we've got for the rapids ride and then these these were put in in the last episode in the rapids episode right so this this is not new but i've just connected all of this up and then the road continues around this way uh, there's another entrance point into uh, into the park then it comes around underneath the uh, the flying coaster underneath the main entrance and then it comes back around full circle back to the front of the park uh, so that's the maintenance side now we also need to deal with admin offices and um, some of the staff facilities so guess what's coming next so you've seen all the maintenance areas now let's talk admin offices here's our front gate this is where you're going to meet all of your uh, guests so this is where you, all of your staff are going to come through uh, so you're going to sign everybody in and just to keep the theme going with the front entrance i've actually used the ticket offices uh, for this so uh, i've used it as the as a base and i've just done a smaller version of the ticket offices and inside of course you've got everything that you'd need to have a reception so you've got a computer to book people in um, you've just got some decoration and everything so like i say i wanted to keep this like the ticket offices uh, because the theme has to be consistent. It, there's a brand for Chacharolandia. There is, I know we've done themed areas and everything, and we lose that brand as we do the theme areas, but the front area of the park needs to have that central that central brand. Now, let's talk admin offices, because this is where all of your staff are going to work. Parks don't just operate on the idea of having ride operatives and shop staff and everything. There is a whole army of people that's behind a theme park that you possibly don't even know exist and they will all live in an admin office now you'll be forgiven for recognizing this admin office uh, i have actually pulled it in from funny fun spot this is the admin office that I built for that. And again, just for the same reasons as the maintenance areas, it didn't really get enough love in the Funny Fun Spot series. So I've pulled it through into this one. That and the fact that this episode so far has already taken me 50 hours to do, even though I've pulled in buildings that are already pre-built. I just don't have the time with a full-time job to build an admin office from beginning. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to appreciate that before you start whinging about it in the comments. <laughs> but let's give you a tour anyway. Uh, so here's the reception area. Um, oh, I've made some changes to this, by the way. So this isn't a, a direct copy of the Fundy Funds, but I have done some Chacholandia kind of changes to it. Uh, so let's see if you can spot the changes if you're also a fan of the Fundy Fun Spot series. Uh, so here's the reception. This is where you check in. This is where uh, guests and everything would, would come and uh, meet. And we're going to come around this way because the first thing I'm going to show you is the, go through the wall, uh, is the canteen. So I've built a, a canteen out for this one. Um, and in case you're wondering, by the way, this is, I, I think I can say this now, this is a direct copy of one of the offices that I used to work at that's now closed. So um, not a direct copy, but like a really heavily inspired version. The layout and everything is very similar. So anyway, here's the kitchen. This is like a social space that you'd come and have meetings and everything. This is where you would, uh, this is where you would go. Uh, change the camera because I don't go through the floor. This would be uh, like a, an open plan office area. There are far too many desks in this office for the type of park that this is, right? Um, I, I know this already. I'm fully aware that this is way, way, way overkill. You would probably have, what, maybe a quarter of the desks? But the, the type of teams that work in theme parks, you're dealing with people like marketing and finance. You'll have procurement teams. They'll be the ones that go off and buy all the merchandise and they source everything. Uh, you know, like the teddy bears that you buy and all of the tat that you buy in the gift shops and whatever. That's all sourced by people like procurement. You'll have people called continuous improvement. They're the ones that look at everything in the park and see if they can find efficiencies. They'll be looking at stuff like uh, rides and how they can make the throughputs more efficient. They'll be looking at the queue algorithms that I so lovingly talk about you know how how long a queue should be to make it look like that um or to make them look a certain size i talk about that 
in something that's coming up later on. Um, and you'll also have other loads and loads of other teams. You'll have gardeners, you'll have maintenance teams. They'll all have office spaces. Um, you'll have mark, like, like I say, marketing. You'll have digital signage. They'll they'll have their own uh, their own little departments. So, like I say, there's this whole massive massive team. HR, training, recruitment. Oh, the list just goes on, right? Um, and so here I'm giving them a little bit of uh, meeting space. So we've got a load of meeting rooms that are set up here. Um, you can come in, you can use them as training rooms, you can use them as, as meeting rooms, you can use them as, as whatever you want. And then there's a little bit of social space that's living out the side of the front here as well. Uh, just to give a bit of a breakout area. So, you know, like when meetings have breaks and stuff, uh, they just get that that opportunity, right, to just to chill out and have a, have a break. And then we've got, yes, we've got yet more desks. Um, another department I've not mentioned, IT. They'll also have a space within the within the actual office area as well. Like I say, I'm just going to keep reeling them off, and I'm not going to do them in a list because the last time I did that, people turned off the video. <laughs> so you've already got some. I'm going to bleed them through the talk, um, and then we're going to come into the final office space, uh, and this this is like um, a more wider a wider open. So you might have people like customer services in here, for example, or you may have what they call a CEO office. So you'd have more. Um, Plus your offices uh, elsewhere for the big wigs, you know, the people that actually run the park, the directors and all of that. And the hierarchy would lead you up the more senior you go. So they would all need office space and they'd all need desk space. And a modern theme park wouldn't separate your senior leaders from your um, from your frontline uh, staff because, you know, it's flat hierarchy. They need to be on the floor to be able to do anything. So anyway, this is the office space that I provided uh, provided for them. And then we come back out into the uh, back out into the reception area. And just as a <laughs> just as a heads up, there's the Fundy Fun Spot logo just to say thanks. I don't know if I'm going to replace it with the Jadolandia. Um I quite like the idea that <laughs> it's a cookie cutter from somewhere else. <laughs> so uh yeah, let's see. Let's see how that goes. And there's something else to show you. There's loads to show you. Um but some of it's not quite ready. That's going going to come in the in the final uh, the final update. But there's something else to show you at the back of the park that I've been working on and that's the fact that your staff also need somewhere to eat. Now this is where this gets inter interesting because we know that uh, the admin, admin offices are far too big for, <laughs> for what they're doing and you might now be sitting there thinking this is really small for a staff canteen right this is this is like not re not realistically small uh, this is too realistically oh god it's so unrealistically small it's not Believe it or not, uh, you're not going to have all of your staff park, uh, your staff in your park eating all at the same time. So yes, you may have 1,500 people or so on park at any one given time. A lot of your admin offices will be eating in the kitchen that you've supplied down in the uh, main office. And then your frontline staff that are operating the rides, your shops and everything, which would serve the most of your staff. They're not going to be eating all at the same time. So you don't have to have anything that caters for them in one batch so unlike the theme parks where you know that you're going to get a rush at lunch and uh, you're going to need a lot of space for uh, your admin offices and your admin staff and your, your frontline staff they're not going to be eating all at the same time um so i'm hoping I <laughs> it's probably that the fourth time i've said that <laughs> i'm hoping you've got the point so it doesn't have to be big it just has to be uh, big enough to house things and uh, i've taken the lead on this by the way from gardaland their canteen is tiny i was really 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 surprised um and then they explained why and i was like oh okay yeah that makes complete complete sense uh, so for the <laughs> for the ones at the back <laughs> you're not going to have everybody eating at the same time <laughs> so you don't need a big space uh, so what i've done here is i've just done some surveys it tends to be more uh, buffet style uh, when you have these kinds of uh, areas so you just come in you grab some food you pay for it and you go and sit and eat and it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a social space now I've, i did something very similar in raygate lake you would have recognized this kind of layout from raygate lake uh, but what we didn't have when i did raygate lake was all of this stuff from hydro um low Loads of kitchen equipment that now looks that now looks awesome. Um, I didn't want to go too crazy with the details in here. Like I said, with the maintenance stuff, it's starting to get to a point where the park is at that tipping point of performance versus piece count. So I have to be very selective about what I do detail and don't detail. So this is just enough for me, right? Uh, this just whoops. Uh, I pressed R rather than T. <laughs> <laughs> so my camera didn't move. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted this to be a, a closed-in social space, a bit decorated, a bit kitted out, uh, and a bit and a bit lovely. And then, of course, you've got uh, the outside space as well uh, that's just in here. Now, because this is directly in the middle of the park, uh, what I have done is I've tried to hide it as best as, I, as best as I can. So I've just put this topiary uh, hedge 
along the side. Uh, I've also edited all of this a little bit as well. So we've got uh, the fences and everything I've, I've brought forward. So it's now actually restricted a little bit further forward. This now makes this alleyway make a bit more sense. I didn't plan to put this in here. This kind of just happened accidentally. It's just where I had enough space to put a building of this size, right? So it just happened. But actually, it now makes this alleyway and this entire dead space make a little bit more sense. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with this uh, with this kind of like feeling. And you don't really see it from elsewhere. You, you're sort of distracted by the stuff that's in front of you and to the side of you. You don't really look in there and go, oh, stuff building. Uh, and then up at the top here, I've then just covered it out with some trees. So... You can't really see it from from up here, right? It's sort of it's sort of well enough. Uh, it's well enough hidden, so it's it is what it is. Uh, it has to go somewhere. You can't always hide everything from view. And like I say, if you ever visit Gardaland, uh, you'll see this. If well, you'll probably already know where it is. Um, if you have been to Gardaland, you'll probably already spotted it. So it's very, 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 very similar. And this is the other thing to remember, by the way. When you're dealing with uh, admin offices and you're dealing with back of house and everything, like we've made this massive effort throughout the entire park to try and hide as much as we can of the service areas and everything away from the guests, right? So we've been, like this, this for example, we've been very considerate with sight lines and we've been very considerate with what the guest can see. And then uh, over here with the log flume, we've tried to hide those admin offices and the uh, back of house offices as much as we can by using foliage and everything so it doesn't completely you can just see them peeking through the trees uh, and it doesn't completely break the immersiveness of the ride that you're actually on but when you can't hide it from the top of roller coasters you just physically can't do it because you can't hide the world unless you put a tunnel around the coaster so i like that this coaster the wooden coaster actually backs onto or looks onto the entirety of the maintenance warehouse from here it's just this absolute sheer mess of stuff that you've got in front of you and you can see it from the roller coaster at the top of the lift hill and i think that just it's just such a juxtaposition of everything that we're trying to achieve with Chachalanda, you know, spending the money to hide the stuff, etc. And this is just like that perfect juxtaposition of going, oh, look, just before your first drop, here's, here's a maintenance area for you to look into. <laughs> so, yeah, I like I like how this is how this has turned out. So I've got some uh, final touches and stuff to do. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get one of the surprises in as well that we're going to do for the tour. So I'll be able to show you that. So let me just do some fine detailing of the stuff that you've probably already worked out that I'm hiding from you at this point uh, i'll be back in a mo all right then you guys so we've saved the best for last the last update of the last episode is going to be car parks how bloody boring <laughs> <laughs> I've got some other stuff to show you as well, so please stick around. Don't just leave the video yet. I mean, you've got this far, so you might as well stick it out, right? <laughs> but I did just want to get you excited for this because this view, this is a completed park. This is what Chachaolandia looks like now that it's complete. Let's just absorb this for a moment. Let's just take a moment for this one, right? <sighs> What a series. Anyway, we've got the tour coming in the next episode, so it's not completely over. Um, and, of course, we could we could do this forever, right? But uh, let's talk let's talk car parks. Let's get the boring bit out of the way. So you'll see from the top here I've done loads of work on the car parks. I've got some touching up to do, uh, which is also true inside the park. So um, that's going to be ready in time for the tour that we're going to do We're going to do next week. Uh, but the car parks itself, we have enough spaces for the guests that we've got. So using all of the usual calculations, I've worked out that this park's Total capacity would be 16,000 guests. That's all. It seems like it's going to be bigger, right? Uh, but no, 16,000 guests. And so I've also then used the algorithm that I describe in the top tips video for the car parks and how to work out how many spaces you actually need. And I've put that number of spaces in here. So I can safely say we've got enough spaces for the number of guests that we are expecting. We've also got Coach Park over here. Uh, and we've also got our disabled base in the front, in the front here. Um, so let's have a look at the actual car park itself then. As I said, I've got some touching up to do, uh, but I've been thinking about the actual strategy itself of the car park. So to start with, we split off coaches, disabled and drop off, and they come down this row here, and you'll see why in a moment. And then we split off our cars. Now the strategy of this car park is that you would load from the back to the front. And the reason that you do that is so that you fill in all of the bays on the left and the right hand side. And then as you're starting to run out of bays here, you're then free to open up, uh, open up a lane. Now, you wouldn't do it the other way around. You wouldn't load from uh, the front back because when you start to run out at the end here, you may have sent too many cars down the row and then they've either got to turn around and come back or you've got to find somewhere to for them to park down the bottom here. So you just we're going to be loading it from the back to the front here. 
And then, of course, we, we split off uh, this way. We've got our Chachalandia colours. Uh, so we've got the blues, the oranges and the pinks. Uh, and then we've just got some street lights and everything just to light the car park enough for you to be able to get back to your car safely at night time. And of course, we've got all of our disabled bays uh, that are working along here as well. So they're close to the entrance so that our disabled friends can get into the uh, into the park itself and enjoy it without actually too much of a too much of a trek. And so we're going to come this way, this way, this way, this way. Um, I've done some decoration along this side as well. So, of course, we've got all of the lights along the along the sidewalk. And we've also just got a fence here, especially remembering that we are sending all of our buses and our coaches and our public transport and our exit traffic is all coming along this road here. So, of course, you want to keep your guests as safe as, safe as possible. So that's what we're doing here. That's what the fence is for. And just in case you're wondering, here in the UK, we tend not to put walkways in between our bays here. So I know that a lot of you will be questioning where the walkways are. Uh, we don't use them in the UK. It's just literally a free-for-all. You just dump your car and walk. <laughs> we we have no real safety protocols with, with car parks. But I know that in some European countries, it's a legal requirement for you to have a walkway and all of that stuff. So in the UK, no, we don't. We don't have that here. Uh, and we've got a drop off. So, of course, guests are going to be coming by taxi, by car, uh, lift with friends, etc., family, whoever that may be. So we've got a drop off so you can come in. Uh, the cars can drive in this way, get dropped off and then move on. Uh, and then we've got public transport. A massive, massive deal for theme parks at the moment. You know, reduce the number of traffic or the amount of traffic that you've got coming to your park. So use your buses. So that's what we've got here. We've just got the bus stop along here. I've kept it nice and simple. Didn't want to over overcomplicate what we were doing, uh, what we're doing here. Like with the coach park I could have put lines down uh, but what you tend to find is that a coach park without lines is actually more efficient than one with uh, because coaches will always regulate their own uh, their own spaces coach drivers are awesome at knowing what they can do with the space they get given because they are they're driving tanks right <laughs> they're driving these massive massive vehicles so if you try and prescribe to them where they should park yeah they'll park between the lines but they'll probably know a better way of parking there their coaches and stuff so they they play tetris with themselves right the minibuses the coaches and everything they'll they'll slot in where they need to and they know they can get out so that's why you just give them an, a nice open empty space with no lines or anything like that it's just let them do what they need to do because they're the pros at it there is a there is an algorithm you can use to work out how to do par car parking spaces for coaches but whatever this is the right space this is the right space for the number of coaches that you're expecting so uh, we, we're good to go we're good to go there and then this is the entrance this is i'm not going to do a tour of course that's the, that's the next episode so i'm just going to show you now the bits that i've changed um i've got some updates and everything for some other bits that that you haven't quite seen uh some of the things that i'd say for the top tips video that never actually not top tips sorry the extras video that never came out but this is the entrance this is the entrance area this is chachalandia how weird is it that it's now a complete view? Look, roller coasters and rides and stuff. You can't see the hyper coaster. It's like a hidden gem. It's awesome. Like, where's the hyper coaster? You just can't see it. There it is, through the trees. <laughs> but what you can see is the flyer. Ah, oh, yes, guys, this has just turned out so well. I just love this park. I literally love this park so much. Uh, right, so let me show you what uh, what I've done. The first thing to show you is, th is this bad boy. Uh, I hadn't shown you this yet. It's the Libertalia sign. Thank you to Spike for this one. Um, how beautiful is this? It's 2,000 art shapes. Not art shapes. It's 2,000 <laughs> hydro beams. It looks so good. It's just beautiful. Such a beautiful font. So that's the sign. I've just put in the rise... Uh, the it's the rise of but it's not the rise of whatever you know what i mean i've added the words rise of to the sign <laughs> so there you go that's now the actual sign itself and in case you were wondering uh inside here i've now put the lighting on the on the stairs so i know i said i was going to uh so it's now uh if i just use my different camera i've now just put that in so the, <laughs> you're not gonna kill yourself on the stairs anymore <laughs> <laughs> Inside here, I needed to put some CCTV up. I realised I hadn't done it. So that CCTV is now in really random places. Uh, so you can see that it's on the wall here. Uh, and I've also put it uh, just in like little little areas that you wouldn't necessarily notice it. The idea of that is to make sure that your guests are sitting down. They're not going to be causing themselves injury and stuff as they're, as they're going around on the, uh, on the actual ride itself. So over this way, we were talking about queue covers for uh, the queue line here. I did put them in. I just I couldn't li not leave it right, so uh, I just I've put the queue covers in here. 
So yeah, no brainer really. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know why I questioned it. Oh, I've got a stallage. Oh, I know what I've done there. That's something I also need to show you. Um, so the the hypercoaster stalled. That's a thing. <laughs> so okay, don't look. I'm just going to quickly actually um, open it because it should have finished its test. There we go. Uh, right. So this is the next update then. Got ourselves an extra ride. We had this dead space here, right? Uh, we had this 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 area here that just didn't have any kind of. It had nothing going on other than interacting with the the hyper coaster. I thought about putting shops and stuff in, but why would I put a shop or food or whatever here when this is a massive food court and you're either going to be going to there or coming from there? So it, having food here just didn't make sense. It needed something, and so what we've got is a troika. Of course we do. Now this one is called uh, Pendulum and I have allowed the members that have signed up, you know, the ones that you, you click join on the bit down below on the video. Um, I've allowed the three of the members uh, to actually name the ride. So this one is Risen, 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 apologies dude, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, Risen I think it is. And this one's called Pendulum. So nice and simple, does what it needs to do. Beautiful ride. I love the Troikas. They just sit so perfectly in any kind of skyline. I just, they're, they're fantastic, right? I just love them. And so that's what we put here. Very generic, very the uh, very non-themed. And this is the idea of uh, supporting Sun Giant with not having a theme. It comes out of the uh, the Tudor area into this non-themed area and then up to the up to the hypercoaster area so yeah <laughs> that's fine now the reason that the hypercoaster stalled uh, is because i had to edit the track slightly this was pointed out alex i'm so sorry i didn't take your last name um this was pointed out by alex that the transfer tracks don't actually meet the transfer track <laughs> so <laughs> i've just corrected that they now do uh, the reason for that by the way was because i reprofiled this section originally they did meet uh, but i actually reprofiled this section to have a slightly better slant so i've forgotten to actually extend the pieces of track out so they do now actually fit but that's the reason that it's stalled because when you um, do a test on roller coasters when it completes a full test and you have dispatch timing uh, the first run after a successful test run it ignores the batch timing so it sends the train straight away and that's why it's stalled because it obviously didn't clear a block in time so that's something for you guys to know if you're loading a park uh, so over to uh, the I don't know, is it a drop tower? Do you call this a drop tower? It's called Summit Plummet anyway. Um, and this one is part-time PC pilot that's named this one. So thank you for that one. Nice and simple. Again, says what it what the ride does. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. In its beautiful colours and everything. Love this one. Love this one. And then we come over to uh, the, claw, the claw ride. I don't even know what the actual real name is. Uh, this ride is in real life. If you know, please let me know. I just know it's I just know it's the Canada's Wonderland one. Uh, it's actually called Sledgehammer at Canada's Wonderland as well. So this one is named by uh, BMK Music. So thank you for this one. Uh, so we now have names for all of the rides in the park. Yes! <laughs> that was the bit <laughs> that needed finishing, right? Uh, so there's also another one as well. Um, it's over here. Uh, I've just, I don't. Uh, sorry, I thought I'd written down the name for this one. You know, you know who you are, uh, and it's the idea of using glass for the, uh, the the water bits here, like the the plane of water. I tried it. It only works if you're using a small square space. Um, it would work perfectly if you're using a small square space where you colour a piece of glass blue uh, or a, a bluish colour, and it looks like water. It looked really, really good. Um, in the bits that I previewed it but then when you start to use multiple pieces of multiple panes you then have the joins and if you start to overlap them you get this overlap effect it just didn't look right so it would be a perfect technique if the area was square unfortunately it's not square so I just kept it as it is uh, for this one but thank you so much for that tip I did check it out and it does work but just not right here <laughs> so uh, and I think looking at my list um, I think that's everything that, that I need to sh that I need to show you. So, guys, this just come back here. That's Chacholandia. How awesome has this turned out? Please let me know what you think about the entire series in the comments. If you have liked it, please leave a like on on the video. I know that uh, backstage is a very niche subject, right? It's a, it's either going to you're going to love it or hate it. It's not like a roller coaster. It's not rides. It's but it's the necessary backbone 
of your park. So please let me know what you think of this one. Guys, next week is the tour of the park. Uh, so I'm going to do some final touches before next week's episode. Then we're going to go on a tour. It will be an extended episode, so it will be longer than half an hour. Um, so plan that, into, <laughs> plan that in your diaries because it's coming. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that there's going to, going to be uh, something special about the tour. I'm just hoping that... Uh, things can line up that the universe lines up so that we can so that we can put it off so please come and join us next week for the full tour of Chachalandia from the guest view and we can see the park in its entirety but of course until we speak next week please look after yourselves this has been awesome thank you so much i'll speak to you next week take care bye bye